in our TV talk segment, we are talking bird box. Cause you know, a bird in the box is worth two. Wait, no, that's not how the saying goes. <laughs> so this is a, a Netflix movie, right? This was Yeah, a- it had limited theatrical release. Oh. And I think that was just so they can actually get it to the awards, but it was a Netflix release. I don't think so. it's gonna win any awards. <laughs> uh, there were a couple of things. The, the basis of the movie is there's these like invisible monster things, and if you see them, you go insane and kill yourself. And it's Sandra Bullock and Trevante Rhodes basically trying to live life. Right. So they're trying to survive the apocalypse. So they have to do a whole bunch of stuff to not see the monsters. Yeah. Right. So you live in the house. You board up the windows. And cover them in newspaper. Drive your paint. car by GPS navigation. After you paint the windows <laughs> with uh, latex paint. Yeah. And uh, I was so. Actually, I thought I always loved Sandra Bullock. So I thought Sandra Bullock yeah. did a good job. I thought Javante Rose did an awesome job. I thought John Malkovich did a great job. I loved his character. Yeah. Um, he plays a mean old drunk. And and very well, too, I might add. He just I love that. I actually kind of liked the little love story between her and him. I thought there yeah. was some good good stuff there. You and, mean between Sandra Bullock and Javante Yeah, not, not John, John Malkovich. Malkovich. Okay. Right. <laughs> and, uh... They had a moment, but it was not that kind of moment. And one thing I actually really loved about this movie was the blindfold shots. The shots. Through the blindfold? Through the blindfold. Yeah. Because that really gave, like, I had a hard time carrying, again, Mm -hmm. I'm not a, a horror movie, it's just not a thing anymore. Had a hard time caring for the characters, but when... Like in getting in their shoes, but when it showed them doing something, and you were like, eh, and then it showed, you know, what she was seeing through the blindfold, it was like, oh, oh God, that would be yeah, terrifying. Can't see anything. And I thought they did a really good job mm-hmm. of conveying the terror. I, I like that they did the two, the close up shots while they're blindfolded, so you don't really get that wide, so you don't even get to see really what they're doing either, which I thought was pretty neat artistically. I had a lot of problems with this though, so, but if y'all got something good to say, you can go ahead and then I'll. Well, just. As a horror movie-ish, it's again. I don't think of it as horror genre because it misses a lot of the like. There weren't. It doesn't do the tropes. There weren't tons and tons of jump scares, which is fine. Build that tension. I'm all for it. They let you get to actually know the characters before they slaughter them all helplessly, you know, and, <laughs> and that's nice too. I always like to get to know someone before they get killed horribly. I like that it was kind of like the Seinfeld of horror movies, <laughs> and what I mean by that is that it was it's, absolutely about nothing. Mm-hmm. Like it's true. You're not wrong. <laughs> so if I care about a character nothing else really seems to matter it may not be a great movie but i could enjoy that movie i could really like that movie if i care about a person or if Mm -hmm. i want to see them succeed uh the king of kong is a great example it's a documentary about a dude playing donkey kong (laughs) but they make you care for that guy so much that that is one of the best movies i've ever seen and this movie starts off and it jumps in time Back to front, back to front, back to mm, front. I could take that or Which it. you don't usually like that sort of thing. It works. I, I don't mind the, okay. the riffs in time stuff. I, like Pulp Fiction and stuff I love. It's one of the greatest movies ever. But when you have a horror movie and we're going to kill 98% of the cast and you start with the end of the movie, so <laughs> I know who's going to live and who's going to right, die. Right. You already know not to get too invested. <laughs> then I had a very hard time caring for a character. Because when a character come in where I should be, you know, in a good horror movie, you have to care if that person lives or dies. Right, you get to know them and, and you care. And yeah, it, yeah. I had a hard time, because in my mind, I'm like, well, they're going to bite it. When are they going to, you know, when are they huh. getting dead? So I had the opposite effect, which is not that, it wasn't for me like, oh, well, this person's going to die. It was the anxiety of meeting the new people. Because there continue to be new people that show up and you're kind of like, Oh my gosh, who else is going to have to die for us to get to that ending? <laughs> so it was, oh, there's another one that's going to die. <laughs> there's another it's like, one oh, please die. stop Dun, showing Dun, up. Dun, You're all Dun. doomed. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong movie. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so I had a I had a hard time with that. That that broke me out of the movie. The fact that no one ever got over, what, five years? I can't remember the movie took place, however long it was, four years, five years. No one ever yeah. got better at being blindfolded. Like, <laughs> they were still just as fumbly in a net. You would think of being blindfolded for five years, you'd get a little bit better at it. I think they get like the blind swordsman eventually and just be like awesome. Actually, but, yeah. so I really enjoyed the end of the movie, like the last 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Because that went past the point that they showed us at the start. And then I didn't know who was going to die. And then there was some genuine tension for me. I'm like, oh, is she going to make it? But... By the about fifth time Sandra Bullock fell down, <laughs> running in the woods, I was like, "Just get up and just 
pick up your feet. Pick Stop your dragging feet. your feet. I think I might have actually yelled at the screen. Stop dragging your feet and run. Like, she, uh, and she is the main character of this. She's the driving yeah. force behind this. And there's two kids in there. And she doesn't name boy, the kids. Girl. Boy, girl. That was boy, so girl, sad. Girl. <laughs> and for me, again, that made it really hard to care for her because she was so distant and so cold to, to Which, everyone. They set that up in the beginning. Like, oh, hmm, that's a setup. <laughs> like, you Which, I mean, I kind of get it. They're going to die. Like, that's kind of your thought, yeah. right? You know, everybody's going to die. It's a doomed yeah, world. Yeah, so there's no sense No point in naming them. But at the same time, they're kids. They should have names. And that kind of... Mm-hmm. That kind of my inability to to latch on to somebody and care for somebody um, really hurt my ability to to get into the movie and enjoy the movie. And then they did stupid things, which they always do, because they don't go up the stairs. Oh, they went up the stairs. <laughs> don't <laughs> open the do? door. How many times did they open the door? Right? Everyone that comes in the room is killing you. Okay, let's open the door and see who this <laughs> one is. And it's like, stop opening the door. So there was all those like things, and I just... So yeah. I didn't care so much about Sandra Bullock as a character, but for example, the boy and the girl thing, and one of the things that she kept doing is she wouldn't make decisions. They were going throughout the entire movie, and it wasn't that she was unable to make decisions or she had anxiety about making decisions, but making a decision meant that she accepted what was going on, mm. and she was avoiding that responsibility. And so whenever I looked at her character, I didn't see it as a character I would identify with, but I saw her as a satire of a lot of people around us that we see in modern day that, you know, they're not choosing to make any kind of decision or create any kind of production. They're living their life vicariously through social media. They're not doing anything themselves. They're just observing and then liking or mm-hmm. signing off on something else that other people do. But again, that's what they set up in the beginning, that people are not connecting with each other. We're yeah. all just like isolating ourselves. You're alone in a crowd, and, and they made us really alone. It's true. By making us watch it at home on Netflix instead of in a theater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just kind of me. Yeah. You got anything else? Yeah. All right. Well, that's our time. Thanks for watching Screener to Stream It. And remember, don't take your kids to the movies on Tuesday nights because that's when we go.